Hi there, and welcome to the let's play of Baldur's Gate 2. I'm Baron. So, we're playing the whole game, Shadows of Arm, including the expansion Throne of Fall. The Lord of Murder shall perish, but in his death he shall spawn a score of mortal progeny. Chaos shall be sown in their footsteps, so saith the wise Orlando. Well, at least he doesn't sing it this time. Spend your youth in the library fortress of Candlekeep, under the kind tutelage of your foster father Gorion. Imoen shared this home, a kindred spirit. Her background was as mysterious as your own. Gorion's murder brought answers to your questions when his killer Saravok was revealed to be your brother. You and Saravak were a product of the Time of Troubles, a chaotic period when gods were made flesh and forced to walk the earth. One such deity foresaw his own death and walked the land before the cataclysm. He left a score of mortal offspring intended to be the fuel for his rebirth. The god was Baal, Lord of Murder, and you are one of his children. Saravak sought a war of sacrifice to prove his worth, believing he would become the new Lord of Murder. You killed your brother, sending his taint back to Baal. You were the hero of Baldur's Gate, but some suspected you shared the same lineage as Saravak. You departed soon after, under circumstances much darker than anyone would have believed. They came as you rested, figures cloaked in mist that clouded your thoughts, blurring the lines between consciousness and dreaming. There was no malice or hatred, no mention of an old score, only quick capture and the promise of grim deeds to come. Okay, so before we start a new game, there's something I want to show you. I'm going to play on core rules. Um, although normal has some advantages, for instance all the hit point rolls are maxed out and all spells are learned automatically. So whenever I you know, level a character or try to learn spells, I'm gonna lower the difficulty and then put it back up. I hope I remember that. But it's important that you start with at least core rules uh, uh, when you import a character. Because if you start with a lower difficulty level, um, the hit point of the character you, that you import would <coughs> be recalculated. We should come um, out with something like 54 hit points or something like that. Because we already maxed out the hit points in Baldur's Gate 2 when we leveled. And uh, Baldur's Gate 1 when we leveled. Um, I think the game gives you an average of 37 or something uh, if you start a game on a lower difficulty level. So, well, if you import a character, at least start at core rules. You can lower the difficulty after you import your character. Yeah, that's important. Okay. Let's start a new game then. And as I told you, I can import a character because we finished Baldur's Gate. I have this nice little Haywood file here. And again, I could pick a specialist mage, 
By then I don't like the spell restrictions of those classes. I want a versatile mage and I don't like the wild mage, he's much too random for my taste. So I'm gonna stick to a plain vanilla mage. <coughs> we can pick two skills, I'm gonna pick quarter stuff and sling. And we can pick seven spells. Yep, we learned lots of spells in Bottle Skid 1 and that's actually all for naught. Because they took all the spells away from us. Why did they do that? Because they changed the spell layout uh, somewhat. See for instance here, protection from petrification. It was a level 2 spell in Baldur's Gate 1, it is a level 1 spell now in Baldur's Gate 2. So we have to pick new spells now. The choices are not too significant because we can still learn new spells in Baldur's Gate 2, but it would be like a good idea to pick some useful new spells in the beginning of the game. So I'm gonna pick Magic Missile, find familiars, new. Identify of course... Um, a shield maybe... Friends... Burning hands and a protection for petrification just in case we come across any basilisks. Uh, six level two spells. I want web, vocalize, mirror image, blur, open just in case our thief screws up or gets lost, and the map has an error. Uh, five level three spells. Dispel magic, haste, of course. And uh, it's a useful one to remove magic. Maybe a <coughs> slow two and a fireball, of course. Uh, five level four spells: polymorph others, polymorph self, um, create a medicine. Maybe a stone skin and a summon monsters too. Great. <coughs> okay, level five spells. I want the breach. I want a lower resistance, a hold monster, and a summon monster 3. Okay, we changed the appearance. Again to a dark red and a dark gold. And I have to pick a voice. To battle and victory! That's no mage. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Yeah, I guess it would be funny if we would give him a female voice. You're not so tough. You will fall by my hand. If you say so. <laughs> that ain't no mage. Let's do this quick and painful. No elf either. To battle with no regrets. That ain't no mage. To battle and victory. What? To battle and victory. I will strive to lead responsibly. Oh well. I must rest for our cause to succeed. Truth be told, I don't like any of those voices very much, but I guess that one is the least unfitting, so I'm going to pick it. And the name, of course, remains the same. Hey, Witcher Blobby. And we accept it. So, now I pause the game, which is important. Take a look at our stats. We have uh, 54 hit points, that's cool. We got all hit points. And yeah, the stats, like, we had them in. The end of Baldur's Gate. And now we still have our equipment here. It will be taken from us in a second. That's why I paused the game here. And the only item that we can legally import into Baldur's Gate 2 are the golden pantaloons. But I have lots of nice things. And actually I would be ashamed to lose them. But we can stack bullets now up to 40. That's useful. They might come in handy in Baldur's Gate 2 too, so. I'm gonna drop them here on the ground before the game decides to take all my items away. And then we can actually still use them in Water's Gate 2. Ain't that nice? Drop it. You gotta be careful though, not all items actually do exist in Baldur's Gate 2. Some items then don't have a description or something. And that's where you see that um, they're not supposed to be in the game. I hope I only picked items that are in the game. Okay, and one something else. Uh, we have now 161,000 experience points, which is the experiment, uh, in a experience cap in Baldur's Gate 1. 
<coughs> my head actually removed it. And after killing Sarawak, I actually had 224,779 experience points. So I lost more than 60,000 experience points in the process. But there's nothing we can do about that right now, so we will deal with that later. So, let's unpause the video and continue with the introduction. No! <laughs> ah, the child of Ball has awoken. It is time for more... experiments. The pain will only be passing. You should survive the process. Interesting. You have much untapped power. Do you even realize your potential? More intruders have entered the complex, Master. They act sooner than we had anticipated. No matter, they will only prove a slight delay. What's going on? He messed with your head too, huh? All I know is we were near Baldur's Gate and got jumped. I don't think I want to remember it all. He's been doing things to us. Hey, what's up, Bloomy? We have to get out of here. Alright, I'm moving. I ache all over the... Yeah, me too. But my head hurts the most. Ears too by the sound of the screaming. We just have to get out of here. I'll not let the little headache get in my way. It isn't like a normal plane, uh, pain. Hey, would you blow me? It's on the inside. Like my bones made a little dagger and it won't go away. Don't look at me like that. It just hurts, alright? Must have been the noise. There was a fight. Assassins came after our capture, I think. There's people dead all over and the fighting is still going on. I could hear it. Are you going to get moving or do I leave without you? Right you are. Let's go. Good. I didn't want to go by myself. I need you around, hey, would you blow me? Don't want to be here all alone. We should look into that room to the west. West and just a bit north. I think I saw some weapons in there. Just the room off the corner of this one. I don't think it's our gear. They probably sold our best stuff. But anything is better than nothing. Now let's go. And we're finally in control of our party. And oh joy oh joy here are our items. Yay. That worked nicely. Somehow, the evil mage did not see them lying on the floor of my cage. You may not use two rings of wizardry at the same time, but it did work in Baldur's Gate 1. And they changed it too. Gives you an extra 5th level spell, an extra 6th and an extra 7th level spell. In Baldur's Gate 1 it actually doubled your first level spells. Oh well. Can't be helped, I guess. have the bow. So yeah, that is Imran. They actually dueled her into a mage. See, she only has seven thief levels and now eight mage levels. I guess it's kinda okay uh, to have, you know, duel her into a mage because she has intelligence of 17. That's kinda useful for a mage. But then again, I'm not too thrilled because I don't actually need a second mage that badly. I need a thief. I'm a mage myself. Hmm. Oh well. Yeah, and see, we only have 161,000 experience points. Um, so hold on for a second while I get my shit back. And here we are back with 224,779 experience points. Just the right number that we had at the end of Virus Gate 1. 
Okay, I didn't change MON's experience points because that doesn't make much sense. She should have been a level 11 thief now. And then I, nah. Let's leave it at that. Yes, it shall be. Move on then. So this is the room that Imran wanted us to explore. Yep. Gotcha. She can look for traps. What is my task? And she found one. Consider it done. We are a few weapons, but we don't really need them. We're better now. What do you want? And you could try to. This Good to go. That. And pick the lock, yeah, see, now in Baldur's Gate 2 you get experience for disarming traps and for picking uh, locks. That's very useful. And here are our golden pantaloons again. And I got plus one, I guess that's okay for you. Golden pantaloons, very nice. On my honor. You say so. I will do my best. That's safe. Quickly, we must get out of here before whoever did this returns. <laughs> I swear, traveling with you is never dull. Jahira. Mm, have you any idea why we are here? No, no I do not. And I would rather, I would rather we further the investigation at a time that was more in our favor. We have friends to find and in time enemies to punish. I will repeat what I believe led to our capture if I must, but I thought it shall prove to be a different than what is already known by you. <coughs> My husband Khalid and I have traveled with you for some seasons now, and the places we have seen number too many to name. Your unique heritage has proven a magnet to adventure, for better or worse, and your foster father was right in directing us to watch over you. We remain in your company as friends more than guardians, and our exploits together have left the land for the better. We have earned many enemies, but we have dispatched them all. Whoever has trapped us now is certainly powerful to have done this so easily. Once we know where we will deal with them in due course, but for the time being it is more important we retrieve our friends and companions and leave this place. Uh, where is Khalid now? Is he not with you? I do not know where he is and it worries me. No doubt he was taken as we were, though it seems we were all meant for different fates. From the state of my head, I think I have been drugged, though I have been spared any physi serious physical mistreatment. You, however, look as though you have been treated most unfavorably, and I should not like to think of Khalid receiving the same. Then I will, un I will unlock your cage quickly. I think I found the key. You've got the key that fits? Then open the door already. Must the hand walk you through this? No. Let's open the door. Major servant awaits. Well, that is a relief, and about time too. We should be going immediately, and not only might our host come back, I simply must see the sun again in none too short a time. This dank place stifles me. Hmm, we will leave immediately and celebrate once we are out of this hole. As you would have it, though there are other friends we must find as well. It is good to share your company again. Yeah, yeah, 3000 experience points. And who do we have here? Minsk will be free! These bonds will not hold my wrath, but will be liberally kicked in good measure. Minsk? Your mighty warrior spirit must find these bars unbearable. Time is short for talk that it's small. Release me. I will rain beatings down upon all who have dared to touch me. And... And Dinah here. She will be avenged. Dinah here? There's another trapped here? Trapped? Her spirit... Her spirit is trapped in a cage created by my failure. I was to guard her, but she, she, they, they killed her as I watched, you see. I know not who they were, but, but I will redeem myself. Minsk, that is horrible. I'm so sorry for you. I won't cry for the dead. I won't. Oh, okay, maybe a little, but I will staunch the flow of tears with righteous fury. A lullaby and good night, evil. Minsk will make you pay. Will you help me? We must join together once more, and our fury will be such that barns will run their quills dry. Yes, ink will be scarce wherever we go. I will try and free you, but I don't know how to open your cell. I do not know either. The bars have no luck at all. They are smithed together. I am proud that they feared me enough to imprison me permanent permanently. Permanently? That's going to make things difficult. But you will keep looking, of course. You would never give up, I know this. A hero always succeeds and a hero never stops short of his goal. 
Uh, he also needs a key or a switch. I do not know where they are. You have brushed me aside with your words. You won't help. Boo can see it now. You do not intend to cut my chains. You only intend to yank them. I will make sure you do not live long enough to abandon more friends. I will, I will, I will do all this as soon as I get these bars open. The bars, they bend and twist with my berserker strength. Means can do are free. No, you will not. No. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, you are a smart one. I understand now. You said what you did just to get me mad. Mad enough to break free! <laughs> you are as smart as Boo sometimes. Now we can resume our adventures together. There are friends to avenge and villains to smack about the face and neck. Right, Boo? Hmm, together we shall make our enemies answer for our fall. Answer they will and my sword shall be the question. We shall have fistfuls of sweet, sweet justice and our enemies will be stains beneath our feet. What? Yes, but... but... alright. Boo tells me that I'm raving again. I did not notice the difference, but I shall heed his words nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, Vince is a fun guy. We will see much more of him in this LP. Come, we must go now. Yes, Minsk and Boo and you, together again. Beware, villains. I will force justice down your evil, evil throats. Ah, I see you still have that rodent. Dare I ask how you have kept it hidden from our captors? Don't ask questions by the left to aged sages. Who is quick and evasive, and there is ever so much of Mints to search, there is no hope of getting us apart. Ew. I really don't want to think about that too much. Yeah, me either. Mints can boo are Mints can boo, and we shall not be separated. Shall we go? The butts of evil await my footprint. Right you are, Mints. Wherever evil does lay its dirty feet, we shall mop the floor with its buttocks. I have lost myself in your words, but Boo thinks you're just ducky. Onward. Okay, and now we have what our first party. Require? Those four are actually quite decent. Oh, we should change the party layout somewhat because um, um, the tunnels are quite narrow here. And we should distribute some equipment. Okay, so we have a stuff mace, it's a plus two mace, yay. We have that nice axe that is very good against mages. And we have the flame tongue, why not? And since Minsk, as you can see, he is proficient with axes, two handed swords, mace, bow, longbow, and two weapon style. That's uh, what I call ineffective skilling. You can never have two-handed swords and two weapon style at the same time. So that's a waste, I guess. I'm gonna have him duel quite often. We still have to give him like uh, skill and, and short sword. Yeah, but this will come in due time. So, yep. I could also have the Ankeg plate. And Gauntlet of Dexterity, since you only have a Dexterity of 16, that should lower your armor class somewhat more to minus 3 actually. Okay, the Gauntlets go to you then. And Keel's Helmet protects against all forms of panic and boosts moral. Yeah, why not? And free action for you. Also, free action for you. And don't forget, we have this Ring of Holiness. Grants an extra spell of each uh, from the first to the fourth level, only usable by clerics and roots. I think in Battles Get One it was only usable by clerics. But here, Jahira can use it too. Yay. And you get a similar. Oh, that's very good. Full plate mail for you. And see, she only has a strength of 15 that gives her. Uh, to hit and damage ability bonus of zero. That's not too good. But we still have like Autos of Ogre power. And that gives her a bonus of plus three to hit and plus six to damage. Yay. Great. Oh yeah. 
We also have, they all have a biography. When asked about her past, Jahira glares as she speaks. She says that she was born in the Tethi region to a loyalist of the King Alamander regime, unfortunately during the Tethyrian civil war. Her family was among the nobles targeted by an angry mob of peasants and she was only spared because a servant girl took her from their castle before it fell. An enclave of druids in the forest of Tethyr was willing to grant shelter and Jahir grew up headstrong in their care. She believes the only way to protect nature is to have an active role in the world, but the cost of this dedication seems to weigh heavily on her mind these days. She grows quiet when, she asks, when you ask about recent events, and while she gives the appearance of her normal strong-willed self, there is a look of doubt in her eyes. It would seem that she has seen too many friends fall to remain unaffected. She does not like the subject and lets it drop. Imran chuckles when you ask her about her past, assuming you are just trying to keep her mind on happier times and places. She indulges you and certainly does cheer up when speaking of how you spent your youth together in cattle keep. She arrived there the same as you, she arrived there the same as you in the company of your foster father Garin, but despite this similarity she grew up much more carefree than you did. Indeed her light hearted outlook has long kept her immune to the hardships of the world, though the dark confines and horrors of your current location have definitely taken their toll. When asked about his past, Minsk proclaims that he is a berserker warrior from the nation of Rashomon in the Outer East, though his affinity for animals speaks to his skill as a ranger as well. He originally came to the Salt Coast on a Dejemma, a ritual journey to manhood as the bodyguard of the young Wichelon of Rashomon named Dinahir. To his shame, Dinahir is now dead and he fears that the doors of the honored Ice Dragon Berserker Lodge are forever closed to him. This personal tragedy has obviously not strengthened Minsk's hold on reality, as evidenced by his continued dependence on his animal companion Boo, a creature that he claims is a miniature giant space hamster. Apparently such things do exist somewhere in the realms, but Minsk has surely taken too many blows to the head. Really? A miniature giant space hamster? Boo is a fuzzy little hamster. While Minsk believes that Boo is a miniature giant space hamster, you are rather certain that the tiny rodent is just a normal hamster. And of course we have a biography too. Your history is nearly as unknown as your future, and the things that are certain seem more fancy than fact. As unlikely as it may seem, you have the blood of a deity coursing through your veins. You are a product of the time of troubles, a cataclysmic period when the gods were made flesh and forced to walk the earth among their followers. One such deity foresaw both the event and his inevitable death because of it, and so took steps to effect his resurrection. This god strode the land before he was made to, and in his wake left a score of mortal progeny, driven to conquer and rule. <coughs> they were not intended to be his successors, but rather the fuel for his rebirth. Heroes would rise to counter these tyrants, and when they ever fell it would fall to the father. The god was Baal, lot of murder, and you were one of his children. You were cared for as a child by Garin, a powerful wizard that may have had even more powerful friends. It was his influence that allowed you to spend your youth in the library fortress of Candlekeep, where the resi resident monks schooled you in your skills. Children were an oddity at the keep, though you did have a friend in Imoen. Uh, she seemed a kindred spirit, though you knew no more of her background than your own. Garin never explained how you or she came to be there, or why you needed such a secluded home. It was only after his death that you learned the truth about your bloodline, when you, forced into conf when you were forced into conflict with his killer, another child of Baal. Serevok was this sibling's name, and he had embraced his foul origins, determined to exploit them and become the next lord of murder. He sought to create death on a massive scale, a war of sacrifice that would prove his claim to his father's throne. You unraveled his carefully wrought plans, and ultimately it was you that took his life, sending his taint back to Baal, a victory of sorts. Now you face an uncertain future. A child of murder, you have a lineage that will tempt the ignorant to fear you, and earn sculptures to use you. And always, the essence of Baal is within, exerting its dark pull when you are weakest. Which is the greater fear? Losing your life to fuel the fire, or losing your will and becoming it? Okay. 
So, we should learn a few spells, shouldn't we? First of all, a fine familiar, then an identify. Isn't that a shield? That is shield. And a magic missile. What do I want here? I want a um, vocalize, a web. No, I don't want a vocalize, just a web. A blur, a mirror image, and a mouth's acid arrow. A haste, a dispel, and a fireball. Or. Um, how about this one? This, this is the combat version of Dispel Magic. It will only affect opponents. A remove magic dispel. A remove magic dispels the magic effects upon any enemies within the area. This includes effects given from spells, potions, and certain magical items such as wands. It does not ever affect enchanted magical items. The chance of the dispel succeeding is determined by the level of the cast and the level of the magic being dispelled. The chance of a successful dispelling is 50%. No, no don't erase it. Erase it. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, let's try this one then, instead of a dispel. That affects the whole area, and the other one only affects a person or enemies. I guess that's better. So, put him off others, put him off self. A breach. And hold monsters. Okay. What about you, Emoen? I guess that's that's okay. Like that. Um, I don't need that. I'd rather take a nice asset around the mirror image. And I guess another magic missile for you. And Jahira, being a druid, can learn a uh, armor of faith and more cure light wounds. Four bark skins, please. Dispel magic and I guess cure light wounds. No, what's that? Medium wounds, probably. Yep. What do I have here? I want a defensive harmony and two cure serious wounds. And that's it. Okay. So I guess we're going to take a break here and we will continue in the next video. So thank you very much for watching and see you soon.